Alright everybody, welcome back to the We Play Dota 2 Group H, where we have got, well, four teams competing for two spots in the Phase 2. We've got teams like Na'Vi, Empire, No Tide Hunter, Liquid, Dignitas. Some of the creme de la creme of the European and American Dota 2 scene are waiting. We've got Group H today, and I think Group F or Group D tomorrow. I don't really know the letters, but um, this is a look at our bracket for today. We've got EG, Arctic, Dust, as well as Aurochs. EG have already taken down Arctic in their first match. And right now we're looking at our other round one match between Dust and Oryx. But we'll take a look at our draft, but firstly we'll introduce our co-caster. I'm Gods, but joining me is Vikramond, who knows a lot more about these teams than I do. So how are you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing great, Gods. And I know you said that in this group there's four teams shooting for two spots, but I think a little more realistically, <laughs> this is a fairly soft group for EG overall. Yeah. They pro it's more like three teams shooting for one spot. What I do like about this group a lot compared to some of the uh, We Play groups that we covered earlier is that there's not one clear anti-favorite. I think any of the three teams that are not named Evil Geniuses have a good shot at actually taking second in the group. So I think uh, among these sort of non-EG teams, we might see some close interesting matches. And in this one, we do have uh, Orox and Dust. These are two pretty strong up-and-coming teams. Orox have a little bit more experience on the big stage. They were in Iso Cup. They were in uh, EMS1. And they've played some big teams. They are Ukrainian and Belarus mixed team, I think. So just overall CIS sort of region. Dust Gaming, meanwhile, they just started playing these sort of semi-pro professional tournaments. Uh, but they have been practicing. I've seen them TMM a lot. They're extremely high MMR players. Some of the best sort of... Uh, Probably one of the better US pub stacks you could yeah. ask for. And so I've seen them play a couple of times. High upside. Uh, potential downside, they do like this PL, and especially this pl Cottle combo, even more than everybody else likes it. So they're comfortable with this draft so far. I, I realize some of these Dust players are actually my former teammates. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I kid you not. Um, back like five, six years ago, a, a, a team called Clan Roof, they were playing Warcraft 3 Dota with me. Chim, the guy, DG Chim, was actually the guy who made me pl start playing Dota. Oh, he wow. introduced me to Dota. Like, this was, I guess, I, I, my first game of Dota was probably about eight years ago. I was a competitive footman frenzy player on Warcraft 3, and I was playing with him. Like, he was one of my teammates or, like, my rivals there, and he's like, dude, you have to start playing Dota. So I started <laughs> playing Dota because of this guy. And uh, awesome. here he is eight years later, and I'm casting his game. So oh. I'm actually really excited for this. So That's great. That's so a small world, basically. Yeah, it, it well, small online world, I guess, when it comes mm -hmm. to the small Dota scene. But yes, yes. Coddle PL, I'm, yeah, I think this is a really strong, reliable strategy. They also get the Nyx Assassin with it, so they get a really strong secondary support or potential solo mid with this. So I like what Dust have done. We'll have to see how Oryx look to combat this. They've got Mag and Shadow Demon, well, he's one of, uh, to me, like, just a jack of all trades when it comes to support mm -hmm. heroes. Disruption against PL is always great. Purge goes through BKB heroes. Soul Catch is just such a sort of big boost in damage. And then you've got, well, Shadow Poison, which can scout, which can do extra damage. He's such a great all around support hero. I don't know why there's not other support heroes as strong as Shadow Demon. <laughs> That's a good question. Maybe Ice Frog will, will enlighten us when he's back from Hawaii. But uh, I do like the Shadow Demon. I like that these three beginning, this three versus three is just such a classic lineup. I mean, you've got the big team fight capacity of Darkseer and Magnus yeah. going up against the incredible pushing and laning power of PL Cottle. You have quite a few interactions, like Aurochs have the illusion generation to attempt to deal with the Phantom Lancer, but on the other hand, uh, Dust Gaming have the better initiation with Storm Spirit, Clockwork, Nyx. So who starts the fights, who lands their team fight spells, and who can push? I mean, basically, Three questions that I don't think have clear answers in the, just in the draft phase. Well, last pick Storm Spirit. This here has got some good synergy with the Keeper of the Light. You can get your mana boosted up come mid-game when P PL, he needs the Chakra in the laning stage. But beyond that, this Coddle is actually going to have some nice synergy with the Storm Spirit. So it'll be interesting to see how it fits in there. Luna, the last picks for Oryx. So they're really going for the heavy team fight. They're going to be looking to just group up as five come mid-game time. What After their laning stage, when they have the mech on Darkseer, Arcane Blink on Mag, Luna maybe with the drums BKB or drums Mant, whatever it may be, and then just take team fights. Because that's something where Storm Spirit can't do a lot in team fights. PL will struggle early game. So I, I like this way of dealing with the Coddle PL draft. Sure. I, I really like the Luna. This isn't a, a hero that they just picked for this matchup either. This is a hero they've practiced. We've seen Orox run Luna quite a bit before. Uh, we've actually, I think we've sort of seen a retrenchment on playing Luna. Why do you think, Gods, we see Luna less often now than maybe like a month, month and a half ago when she was more or less ubiquitous? Um, I think it's a hero which is sort of exclusive to five-man Dota. The big team fight kind of lineups. I think it doesn't really shine if you're playing. You can't do four protect one with, with, with Luna. 
Um, mm. You can't push with Luna. I think it's a very sort of limited niche that Luna fits. But a while ago, that was a niche that every team was playing. Every team was going for right. the big team fight, the strong group up and just push down towers as sort of a big unit. So I think that was where Luna was really became a top pick. And now that teams have sort of gone for maybe a two or three core, we've seen teams go for Lifestyle with a lone Druid, as well as like Queen sure. of Pains. All these, just early today in the G1 League, we had like Juggernaut, I can't remember what exactly it was, but it was these like three core lineups where you have three yeah. sort of semi-carries, all who can get some farm, all who can do some damage. So... I think it's just not really a kind of style of play which Luna fits into. Right, I think that's a very good point. The same time, I guess it was pretty much simultaneous with Bounty Hunter falling out of the bottom of the metagame, basically. Luna was great when everybody was running around mid-game and just always seeking to take five-man fights, but the game slowed down a little bit. Uh, carries, getting more farm on your carry became a little more important, and it no longer mattered that Luna had that sort of very early viability because it was no longer just quite as important. Here, though, I like the Luna. Um, the Cleave, the Glaive, does give you pretty decent potential just against those PL illusions if you get your farm, and they will definitely be concentrating a lot of farm on this Luna because they really have no other extremely farm-dependent hero. Yeah, and I think this is just going to be about overwhelming dust once they get that early farm up. We'll see Mag safe lane. Darkseem may just abandon the off lane, I guess, will be the interesting decision. Mm -hmm. I, 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 don't, I don't think it's very likely they go offensive try lane. I think they're better off just giving Luna the early safe lane farm. Send Darkseem straight to the jungle. Abandon your off lane. Say, PL, you can have, hey, have your 10 minutes of free farm. Because once mm -hmm. they get 10 minutes, we'll have taken down two, three out of towers. We'll have a Darkseem with a mech. We'll have a Mag with Arcane Blink, maybe. Or well, maybe not his Blink Dagger just yet. But they'll have this really strong Death Ball army. And then PL's going to be like, well, I have my 10-minute, what, drums? Or maybe, a like, almost a defusal. Right. But you can't really fight with that. You need more farm than 10 minutes on a PL. Definitely. I, I agree with you. I do not expect them to run an aggressive tri lane. I, I don't rate Jakiro very highly in aggressive tri lanes at all. And it's mostly his movement speed. His abilities are great. But if you get caught out, if the other, if the safe lane manages the lane position at all, you're way too far from your tower to possibly defend yourself, and you can easily just end up feeding on the Jakiro. As a safe lane try, though, this is very dangerous. It's going to be, if they can catch the clockwork out in a disruption, he's probably dead, because they can hit him from outside of the cogs, even on their carry. Well, to introduce our two teams, we have got the team Aurochs, who I believe are all Ukrainian, or at least mostly Ukrainian. We've got Seema the Slayer playing on the Luna. We've got Dubas the Slayer, a guy some of you guys <laughs> may recognize, Dubas, on the Jakiro. We've got Tossi playing the Shadow Demon. We've got CA on the Dark Sea, and then finally the mid lane is Tony Montana, who I believe used to play with DTS or Empire as well. So they've got a few known names over on their squad. Yeah, I definitely think uh, both Dubas and Tony Montana are pretty known players. And so, yeah, Aurox, they do bring a bit of more of a competitive pedigree. Looking towards Dust, uh, their tri lane will be composed of Classic on the Nyx Assassin, uh, Jay on the Phantom Lancer, and uh, Chim, your, your good buddy, on the Keeper of the Light. Then in the middle, they are going to run Ush on the Storm Spirit, and then uh, Jong, or uh, yeah, I think that's, his, that's not an alias. Jong will be running on the Clockwork in the solo lane. Well, Clockwork's going to have a tough time. I think that's a big thing here, which Aurox strategically can just send Darkseid straight to the jungle, which they're doing just that. Whereas Clockwork, he's got to go top, and he's going to be top against a trialing with Jakiro, Shadow Demon, and they can probably zone him out of the lane from level 1. Definitely. It's a tough lane for Clockwork to be in because he's good when, when the other carry is like melee and you can cogs him out and cause a lot of drain. Clockwork can play pretty safely even in the 1v3, but that's not the case in this lane at all. I, Jong is going to have to play just so, so defensively to even stand a chance of staying alive. This Luna, I am confused. Tanking, tanking the creeps a bit. Wanted to keep mm. this... I wanted to, like, push out the lane for some reason. I, I'm confused, but, hey, he really <laughs> wanted this lane to be positioned right where it is now. He didn't want it to be further up near his tower. He wanted it to be right here. And he tanked huh. the creep wave, took himself about 60, 70 damage to do so, but... I'm not, I'm not. I wonder if this isn't... Uh, it, my only theory about that, Gods, is perhaps they wanted to keep full vision of this area in case Clockwork tries to pull a Hannah Montana and hide in the trees for XP. Yeah. So they'll know if he's approaching because they do have the ward. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think they're managing the lane in such a way to, to threaten the Clockwork while also zoning him out. But it's not quite working yet. He is getting some uh -oh. XP. Here we do see the initiation. And with the ice path, we could see a full surround here. There is some blocking going down. They don't get the full surround, but there will be some body blocking. Cogs, oh. no chance. And Luna gets the first blood. 
Nice. Good play there. Uh, they did get a little bit lucky, I have to say, but they were diving right on top of him, which is yeah. very smart. If you end up in the cogs with the clockwork before he gets a ton of battery assault, you're pretty much set. Tony Montana in trouble mid, by the way, a little bit. Ooh. Took quite a lot of damage there from the Storm Spirit. Oosh. Nice bit of start. Nice start there to the mid lane, and that's something which you Definitely. need from the Storm Spirit. We're not going to see a whole lot of rotations from Shadow Jim and Jakiro as long as Clockwork's top lane, but as soon as they feel... They've shut down Clockwork enough. Luna can take the 1v1 matchup, which is going to be happening pretty soon. Maybe we see a smoke and an attempted kill on Stormtrooper, because if you want to try and kill him, you need to do it before he hits level 6. I actually think Magnus is going to struggle a bit in this lane. So far, he's been doing okay, but there's been some very good harassment from Ush, so they may want to do the smoke just to sort of tilt this lane back in their favor and make sure Mag is able to hit, it, hit all his levels quickly. Well, Peel's getting the free farm at bottom lane. We see pools coming out of the supports, and that's... I think somewhat needed when you've got a Nyx Assassin. He is a level dependent support. J Keeper of the Light, another hero you want to get some level, some farm on. And also, actually, a good hero to do sort of act as a semi jungle. He's actually been stacking for days here. And this is. Mm -hmm. I, it's stacking for him. You're not really stacking for the PL here. He's going to look to kill this himself once he hits level 3, level 4. So uh, I, it's sort of an investment for later on. So we'll see these supports <laughs> on the Radiant team sort of start skyrocketing in terms of XP and farm once they can actually kill those off. And, I mean, they're going to need to because, again, Jong is still only halfway through level 1. He's trying to manage this yeah. lane by using this smart cogs play, but it's still going to be difficult. And so they're going to have a deficit there on the Darkseer, sorry, on the Clockwork, that they have to make up somewhere else. And maybe support levels are where they make that up. Support levels are no joke. I mean, high-level supports are great. Smoke Gang coming into mid, by the way. Yeah, they... Ooh, not going to find it. Disruption not in range. Oh, it is. Mm. Has he got boots? And he actually just catches up your ice path. We need a skewer to fall. Actually going to miss the skewer. Oh, wow. oosh, and he almost actually turns around on the Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon's down to about 80 HP there. Actually, uh, they're rotating around the Nyx Assassin. Yeah. If he lands a stun and a mana burn, this could be it. Not going to get enough for a kill. Uh, unless Storm Spirit can get in time. Some body no. blocking will actually catch Storm Spirit up. He needs to get off an attack with an overload hit. Mana burn will get thrown, but they're not going to get that kill here. And I think Nyx Assassin... Considering there's no one in his lane, he doesn't really care about throwing all his mana just to harass Shadow Demon there. Sure. It's actually, um, they are less likely to rotate for a kill just because it's hard to gank with Keeper of the Light. Yeah. Um, so it's really good to trade your mana for Shadow Demon's mana because then Shadow Demon can't rope. You see, he has to walk back to base to actually get his mana. So your Luna gets a first blood. What do you do? You get a three and a half minute Midas. <laughs> and I did not notice he's that. He's looking for another kill here. He's actually going to, well, he's going to do a lot of damage to this Clockwork. Clockwork needs to be careful. Full, not gonna be enough damage just uh -huh. yet and he actually with this build he doesn't have much regen he's gonna be asking this Jakiro for those tangos very very soon <laughs> well that's fine I, we live in a world where people pull bottles onto their carries I think yeah. tangos are a small price to pay and uh, now we see another TP back Shadow Demon having back top and with this clockwork he's actually made himself up to level 3 here so we're seeing a similar leveling to the Daxi who's level, level well, hit level 5 and oh Storm solo killed by a mag what what happened there? Uh, he just he was playing way too aggressively. The bottle was away at base, and uh, Tony Montana was actually holding the bottle. Was just like, hmm, no. He didn't even need RP actually. It was just massive over aggression from us. I think feeling like he was in better shape than he was. He like he kept autoing. It wasn't just a matter yeah. of getting in and getting out. Well, more stacking coming from Keeper of the Light. Well, you know he's actually started to kill this stack here, and he's going to hit I believe probably about level four once he kills off these big creeps. Storm has gone back mid, he's looking for that level 6, can he actually find it, but looks like he's not going to be ganked before then, so Shadow Demon Jakiro is still seeing top, and they're getting up to the le level 3 themselves, so they're ahead of the Keeper of Light for now, but that's not going to last for long once Keeper of Light finishes off this camp here. Absolutely, I think the support levels are, are where to look for this, because Nyx Assassin, if he finds his levels, can be just such a huge asset to a team. And Keeper of the Light as well, I mean, being able to get level 6, uh, it's critical for that Phantom Lancer because then he feels incredibly safe to just split push and you can always recall him back. And I honestly think this jungle, I, I think you're right to highlight it because it could make a substantial difference, especially considering Storm Spirit is really not doing all that great in mid. I, if Storm Spirit was doing well here and had his fast treads with an El Talisman or something, mm -hmm. this fast level 4, level 5 on Keeper of Light would have a l much bigger impact. But unfortunately, Storm can't get too aggressive here, even when he hits level 6 and has all this backup mana, because he just doesn't have the HP. It's something he's right. just going to be lacking. If he gets hit by an RP, he's dead. If he gets hit by an Ice Path, he can get burst down during that time. So he needs to be playing very, very cautiously. Mag's mm -hmm. just had complete rune control as well. That's the other big thing. These supports on Oryx have been giving Mag space to get every single rune. Storm Street has not been able to get any at all because Nyx and Keeper Light have just been spending so much time in their own jungle.
Absolutely. And that last one, a very pretty consequential rune. I mean, regen is okay for Magnus, but it's amazing for Storm Spirit. So being able to control the runes whenever there's a regen up is a pretty big deal. Uh, I do want to say I like the Midas from Luna. I've sort of been thinking about that this entire time. And uh, the fact that they do want this Luna to bring down the PL illusions somehow means that they're going to need a lot on Luna because you always need BKB. And then you're going to need quite a few items to get those uh, those glaives up to the level they need to be at. So getting the Midas means that she'll be ahead on levels relative to PL. She'll be ahead on farm for a while relative to PL. And actually, uh, when this Luna sort of says, I have finished farming, they might find themselves in a pretty good situation for teamfights. It actually looks more like a super late game Luna than it does with this early mid game push Luna. This Helm of the Dominator Definitely. build could be to stack some Ancients. It's straight Helm so. of the Dominator. And the only real reason to go straight Helm of the Dominator is to stack Ancients. So. We'll see him doing that. We'll see him looking to accelerate his farm and just... He'll have the, the Manta BKB, but when he has it, he'll also have a Midas and a Helm of the Dominator right. on top of it. Absolutely. I, I actually think that's a huge deal because the other thing about Luna is the earlier she hits level... If she hits level 16 substantially before the field does, that is a terrifying position to be the other team in because that Eclipse can just burn down so much, especially before PL gets a lot of illusions up. When there's still only one or two PL illusions to absorb those Eclipse hits, you can just get completely wiped. And so the farther Luna's ahead on XP, the more comfortable Aurochs feel. And it'll also get her to the point of being able to clear those stacked camps much quicker. Yeah, and right now, the XP, it's or it going Aurochs way, and that's with their supports being the lo lower level than the Radiant supports. Their Mag as well as Luna are both level 8.5 or something. Luna getting close to level 9. So there's just a big difference between the carry and solo heroes. So the Dire team, their support's not doing well right now as far as levels go, isn't an issue whatsoever. Shadow Demon, not even all that level dependent. Jakira, you want to get the levels on a bit, but I, I feel Oryx in a really good position right now. Mm, I have to agree, honestly. Uh, what are we looking at towards? We do actually have drums finished on PL, so John's sort of building pretty safe, not trying to rush that defusal immediately. I like the drums. They may find themselves pulled into a fight once Luna hits 11 or so, so I think they're sort of uh, positioning relative to that. But if you look towards the gold per minute, I mean, you can just see that Midas already reflected in it. It hasn't quite paid for itself just yet, but over the long term, even if just for the XP, I think the fact that they did hit it in three minutes is... It's the right move to go for them. They're thinking for the long game. They're already thinking about dealing with PL 30 minutes from now. I, I agree. It's If you have 2k gold at three, three and a half minutes in, getting a treads or a fast drums isn't going to do a whole lot. You're not going to be... If Clockwork plays smart, you're probably not killing him, even with a really fast, mm -hmm. aggressive item. So having the Midas to build towards the late game makes a lot more sense if you can get it that fast. And... We'll see our next smoke gank in. It's coming. Well, both teams actually. They're actually going to catch up the mag with a sensual, but there's a shadow demon Jakira seen behind him. RP skewer backwards, and this is going to go horribly, horribly wrong for Team Dust. Both Nyx and Storm brought down. The skewer shockwave maxed out, and Jakira shadow demon were there waiting, smoked up behind him. Yeah, good bait uh, by Aurochs there, actually. Good play from Tossi and Dubas. If they had gone low ground, even in smoke, they would have been spotted out by the Sentry War. So the fact that they stayed on high ground, out of vision, until the moment that Storm Spirit initiated on Tony Montana was excellent. And that's what led to just picking up two basically free kills. You don't mind losing your RP to that, because it's well worth it. And with this, Oryx, Daxi hasn't even really shown himself on the map. He's looking for a fast mech. We're going to see a, a very fast Blink Dagger on Mag at this rate, probably around a 12-minute Blink Dagger. And they're just going to have such a strong lead on all their heroes now. Shadow Demon getting close to that level 6 ulti, and it just doesn't seem like Team Dust are doing a whole lot with this Keeper Light Nyx Assassin. They're getting levels, they're getting farm, but what's it what are they actually achieving with the levels and farm? Even if they hit level 6, level 7, we haven't seen any real pressure or momentum coming from these heroes. Right. I mean, they're essentially doing busy work because they don't feel that 5v5 is advisable at this time, and they want to do the best development on Nyx and Keeper of the Light now for later, basically. Yeah. So, I mean, keep in mind, they have to be not feeling totally uncomfortable. John has had free farm for this entire game. The only sense of any urgency is this potential Midas issue on Luna, but they probably still feel okay about how this PL is developing well, relative to the field. He's going to get himself a T1 tower bottom lane, it looks like, and no contest over that. The Dire Team Oryx is actually going for a counter push at top lane, something which may actually be defended. We see TP's coming in, and this is where the fast levels on Keeper of the Light can pay off. He's got level 5, he's looking to defend Storm Ooh. Spirit, gonna go flying in, Eclipse is there, Oosh, gonna get out of there. He's flying, he's zipping, he's got no TP scroll yet, is he gonna buy something? Nope, Shockwave down. He gets nice picked off, and Smart Eclipse coming out from Luna, and Mag, he's on the chase now, he's gonna skewer if he wants to go looking to get aggressive here, but Storm Spirit throws away his life. 
Team Dust will defend this tower, but I don't think they need to have Storm Street go flying in to do that. Mm. They thought that, I think they thought they were in better shape for the fight than they were. It was just another... Uh, honestly, there have been some serious overextensions from Ush here. I know that he's their, he is their youngest player. I'm sure he wants to get real hype and show everybody his, his Dendi-like skills. And we've seen him perform extremely well in previous games. I think he's just getting a little cocky, I have to say, on the Storm Spirit, because he's gone in a couple of times when it's been really, really inadvisable. I don't blame him for that one attempt where he just got baited, but he died to Magnus 1v1, and he basically just died to Magnus 1v1 again just now. Yeah, Luna now hits level 11, and well, the ancient stacking has been happening. I don't think you can really stack this much further, maybe because it's dragons. The pathing isn't so much an issue, mm. so you can actually keep on stacking, but this is going to be a very, very farm Luna in not much time at all. Wow. Oh, mid lane, blink skewer back. Looking for the Nyx Assassin. There's no actual follow-up damage, it looks like. I'm going to throw an RP oh. just for the solo kill. Mm. Nyx will he... get, okay. j just gets it. <laughs> he would have had another Shockwave in another second or two, which probably would have sealed the deal, but... He was okay, yeah. That physical attack, that right-click did, did get the kill. Absolutely. This Magnus play from Tony Montana has been really quite excellent. I mean, no deaths. He hasn't even really been close to dying. In that last fight, he did something really, really smart that many Magnus players would not, which is that he was patient enough to not blow the RP. And actually, for not blowing that RP, he gets a free kill on Nyx here. Without the RP, he wouldn't have gotten that kill. But because he saved it at top, I mean, he had a haste rune. Like, how many Magnuses do you think would have just run in an RP two and yeah. not gotten the kills? But he played patient, he saved his RP, and as a result, he gets another kill on top of it. He's dominating Storm Spirit at this point. Yeah, the kills that Oryx have been getting have gotten them a huge experience. Lead, not to mention stuff like Minus on this Luna. They, level 12, level 11, they've got, I think, an 8k, yeah, about 8, 9k experience. Lead. The gold graph is actually not all too bad if your team does. You've got a 4k mm -hmm. gold deficit, but when you've got a PL on your team, who's getting close to a diffuser, you're probably not too worried about that, but you are going to be worried about this level difference. Absolutely. I think you're worried about the levels and the fact that, at least theoretically, you shouldn't be so disadvantaged early. You have Nyx Assassin, you have Storm who can theoretically gank all around, but this three level deficit, that's really where you look to this XP difference. It's not so much the gross XP difference as in particular positions. You've got a level eight Storm, okay, nine now, but he's going up against a Magnus who's halfway through 11. Not only can you not 1v1 in that case, you don't even feel comfortable sending your Storm Spirit to gank other lanes, because what if the Magnus comes? He's got his Blink Dagger. He can completely tear you apart. And here we're going to see more... Is this actually going to stack? Oh my god. Be, he's going to stack it, it again. He stacked it, it again. It's, man, these dragons. This is some good... <laughs> this is some luck going the way of Aurochs. You get these dragons, you can oh, stack even more. Yeah. It's about a six stack, I want to say. I think he's got dragons are ridiculous. He's got four dragons and then two, well, non dragons. It's it's six stacks, which is that's the most stacking I've seen since before the stacking change. Actually, top they're gonna get a kill. They're gonna get two kills. They're gonna get one on CA as well. well so yeah, uh, they do actually pick up Darkseer almost certainly. But again, Tony Montana. Oh, oh my God! Wow, wow that, this man is just right place, right time. Skewer is actually gonna do a lot of damage to Chim here, and without mech up, he's got a buckler to block some of this damage. He's got twenty two HP. Fine. Blink one right click. He's dead. Yeah. Oh, maybe uh, not. Yeah, he's the dead. cell. Shockwave. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hey. Yeah, Chim. Yeah. Oh, blinding light. <laughs> that's that's some like eighty percent miss chance. Not gonna count though. He just ran out of mana for well, the RP. If he had RP, he with the defusal blade. He's actually gonna turn this around. Tony Montana hit the dive so far for that, and now we're gonna see Shadow Demon maybe die as well. Disruptions on Kuna. He's gonna purge, but he can't use it. So PL double kill at top lane. I actually um have to give the props to Chim. Your, your buddy there played amazingly defensive. He baited uh, Magnus into spending way too long. Between the blinding light and the jukes and causing the shockwave to miss, he could have been dead 30 seconds earlier, in which case Tony Montana would have been 100% safe. But instead, he just sort of dangled his, uh, his body in front of Magnus and caused Magnus to really overextend. Well, I was getting a bit too excited about all the Luna stacking there, but there was a great fight going the way of Dust finally at top lane. They're going to get T1 Tower out of this as well, so PL now up to about 2k gold. Yep, 2k gold with that T1 Tower, and Aurochs are going to be a bit concerned. You're up against a PL. You can never get too complacent. The gold lead is, well, about 5k, and after that huge Ancient Sack, you expect it to be bigger. The XP down to 10k, but... Orox, XP only takes you through to sort of the early to mid game where you can use those levels. It's actually going to get oh, a no. kill on the Storm at mid lane. RP, mm -hmm. Shockwave, Skewer. Use the full combo and Storm does not have the HP to survive it. 
that's the thing. This storm is a big, big deficit. I mean, a gold lead is is ephemeral. You can take down the Luna in theory, especially considering he's going straight Manta. He still won't have BKB for a while. If your Storm Spirit was doing better as Dust, if Ush were higher level, you actually would not be concerned about this Luna at all. Because, hey, we can just ball lightning in, lasso her, and kill her very quickly. And, I mean, diffuse along the way back so that she can't escape. And That would be one thing. But unfortunately, Storm Spirit is just not bringing the levels to be able to do so. And he's being bullied so hard by Magnus, by Tony Montana, that they can't find the space, and so they have to play passive. Luna's going even more great in that. Picks up an Eagle Song. Could have finished off the Manta, but said, no, I'm going to pick up myself an Eagle Song, go straight Butterfly here instead. So more damage, more pushing power, and I think he just decides Manta. Now that's too defensive for me. I, I guess so. I mean, if you're playing Greedy, you might as well play all the way Greedy. This Eagle yeah. Song, I mean, it does improve his farming speed more. Yep. And it's it, you've got the mag for the mag and dark for the team fight control. Not to mention a hero like Jakiro. He's not really in a whole lot of danger at this point. When he's this far ahead, he's got levels. He's 900 HP is enough. I feel for him at this point. There's a defensive disruption. There's ice path. There's mech. There's blink yeah. RP. There's so much to keep him alive that I think it's an okay decision here to do something like this. And we're gonna see. Well, I think it's about time Oracle to start pushing down his mouth. They haven't pushed the tower the entire game. That's actually a bit of a shock to me, but. What they've done mm -hmm. instead is just get ridiculously far ahead in terms of kills, gold, and just about everything else apart from exactly. towers. Exactly. They're looking to uh, bait the, a kill on the Luna here, but I think Dust are properly concerned at this point to not just dive in. I think you could do this bait before you were up 10-2, but now you've like properly, because you did your job earlier of making the other team scared of you, now your bait doesn't work. <laughs> yep, Luna gets the tower and I think they go for the tier two. They're gonna go on with tier. PL probably not even gonna come and try to defend. He's just gonna keep on farming. He wants to probably go for a heart of Tarask at this point. Anything to give him HP and survivability. Yeah. It's going to have to be a heart, and the only question is, will heart actually be enough, or is the fact that Luna's developing so quickly mean that she can just overwhelm even the addition of the Heart of Tarask? Yeah, Luna goes back mid up to 1,800 gold. Is that Butterfly? No, no Butterfly just yet. Has enough for the Talisman of Evasion, needs another six, <laughs> 700 gold. Oh, Blink Skewer. Ooh. Catches Nyx, he does actually manage to get the Carapace off, and that's going to keep him alive, if it looks like. Ooh. Yeah. Nice reaction. Good dodge. Uh, if the ice path had hit, that would have been one thing, but it just barely missed. Oh, Storm's oh, actually, going in the uh, river. Tony Montana getting caught out here. He's got no skewer. Bleak. He can RP. Ush. He can RP in response if Ush tries to go yeah. on. This is actually a huge mistake. Yeah, Ush was playing so cautiously. He could have actually gone in more aggressive for that kill, but he does get caught out in the end. I think he played it really smart to begin with because he was kiting around the mag, not giving him an opening to use the RP up. <laughs> but then the supports came in, and more well, mag. Everything going the way of Oryx. He finds a regen rune of, of all right. the things. <laughs> uh, really good ice path, by the way, from Dubas. The yeah. high ground to low ground, catching out the Storm Spirit as he... And he predicted, too. He predicted that Ush would just move a tiny bit in, and he immediately positioned his ice path for that. So excellent Jakiro play, too. It's important not to forget that Jakiro is no slouch late game. I mean, I don't know if you were watching the... Uh, I don't remember what tournament it was. Ritmix uh, Losers Bracket Finals, where Arsart Jakiro just got agonims and just was completely destroying No Tide Under late. But Jakiro is no joke. I mean, the amount of magic damage he can deal, and the AoE, which is also important against Phantom Lancer. Yeah, it's it's really a useful hero to have against these illusions. And now, well, Luna, at this point when you're this farm, you've got 700 GPM. You're a counter to PL. PL Illusions is just going to crumble to this bouncing attack, even if you're looking at Reaver, Heart of Tarras coming out. He's got a Reaver, so he's going to have that heart up in the next couple of minutes, but I still feel Luna has enough damage to just go burst through that. Absolutely. What I really like from Orox here, and uh, before this game, you sort of asked me who I, who I favored for this matchup, and I said you really can't overestimate the fact, just the experience of playing against tier one teams, sort of understanding what their mechanics are and trying to adjust to that. Because what Orox are doing here, uh, separate out the execution for a second. Let's just talk about the overall strategy. From minute one, they knew exactly what their plan was in all stages of the game. And the three and a half minute Midas fed into that. So few Luna players would actually go for that Midas, even if they felt greedy, because they'd be like, well, you know, it's not the right build. The right build is Tranquil's Drums or something. Yeah. But instead, Sima knew... He, he, I'm not gonna say he was, like, clairvoyant, but he saw into the future that they would need him to hit certain levels of farm at a certain time, and he everything he did was geared towards that, effectively. Hey, he saw in the future and saw that first blood coming. I don't know. <laughs> Without that, you're not getting a three and a half minute. You can still get that for, like, a five minute minus, which is sure. just as good, and I think he still would have made, probably gone for it here, just because of the way their strategy works, and now they go high ground. Illuminate is going to cause some issues here. This is... Ooh, uh -oh. this, pushing is really hard. 
Now, this is why we yeah. haven't seen Oryx go for too many towers, and we're seeing it here. Peel is going for a counter push at top lane, and Oryx is going to quickly realize, sure, you've got an Aegis on Luna, but I don't think they want to just blow an Aegis here, because there's a high chance where Luna dies once, he dies twice. He hasn't got a BKB. You have to back off here if you're Oryx. The non-BKB is finally biting them in the butt a little bit there, yeah, because you pushing against a Keeper of the Light is just... It's such a pain on the best of days, and when you don't have a, a, any BKBs or any pipe or something, it becomes even harder. The plan from here, it seems to be just to starve dust. They've got this gem up, which is going to be to deward the entire map, and once you deward the map, there's no re no way really safe to farm if you're if you're DG, if you're Team Dust, and mm -hmm. Sorcerer, Blink RP, he's dead, so it's only really PL who can split push lanes, and... The Radiant team are going to be playing blind. They're going to be playing very, very scared. So mm -hmm. I think I think Oryx are okay with this game going another 10, 15, 20 minutes if it has to, despite the fact that 21 mm -hmm. minutes in, their Luna has Manta, Butterfly, Helm, Treads. My, it's, it's almost maxed out, like 22 <laughs> minutes. Right. They're definitely okay with it going a little bit longer just because, again, they prepared. They were ready for this eventuality. They knew it's not trivial to push into a lane that, to push into a base that has a coddle defending it. So they configured themselves for that. But I, I want to talk about John because he's quietly had a very good game too. He's doing yeah. all the right things on Phantom Lancer. He hasn't died. He actually, uh, he did an incredible amount of damage to the tower, more damage to the tier three top than e Oryx came even close to on the tier three bottom. I mean, look at the HP values. We're talking about the, Tier 3 tower bottom barely has a dent in it, whereas the Tier 3 tower top is at less than a third. I think that push was a big wake-up for, call for, or for Oryx. It's like, hey, we can't actually push, and this PL split push we have to deal with. Next, I think next time Oryx will make a completely different decision. They will not let PL do all that free damage to their Tier 3s, but they've, mm -hmm. they've learned a valuable lesson. They're now going to see that they, this is a bit of a threat, this PL. And if PL can buy a space, then you look at Stormsprit getting a bit more farm. His Orchid is coming soon-ish. Clockwork with a hood, so we're going to see a pipe as well as mech on the Radiant team. With pipe, mech, Orchid on the Storm Spirit. That's a lot of key items suddenly being picked up by this Radiant team. Yeah, they're, they are hitting good timings. It's it's very important for them to especially get that pipe. Uh, that'll be so critical to not just immediately die to Luna Magnus. Um, so they need that. They need the Orchid on Storm. It's way overdue, but obviously he didn't have the greatest early game. But usually you say that Orchid's an item you want to hit as early as possible, and that's true. But in this game, it's still Here important at any phase. Mag yeah. wants to go in. PL, they were going for a bit of a split push here. I think they were trying to bait this out by the fact Luna's pushing top. So they're like, okay, let's pretend that we're not defending bottom. But Mag was there waiting in the trees for a bleak mm -hmm. RP to pick off that PL. But not going to find it. So really smart. Once again, Team Dust, they sort of dodge a bullet here. They're just buying time to keep on farming, pushing out lanes. Peel gets pulled top by the Keeper of the Light. And he's suddenly level 15 with a heart of Tarras. So... I, mm -hmm. I mean, John is looking pretty sold on this PL. I definitely agree. He's played a fantastic game. He's played a flawless game, in fact. Something Absolutely. which, if Stormsbury had done, this would be almost a dead-even game right now. Definitely. Uh, Dust, the thing is, and I really like this, whenever you're facing unknown teams and you yourself are a team that's sort of new, I think in this sort of tournament, it's very smart to pick a lineup you know and just be like, we're going to stick with that and we're going to run it whenever we can. And Dust, they have run the PL before. I've seen them do it in uh, team matchmaking. I've seen them do it in the Nedalik League. It's a it's an approach that they understand. It's an approach that John understands. And consequently, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, PL easy mode, but there's a lot of subtleties to it. And he's played it very, very well. And I think the reason they're not losing by more is their comfort with the strategy. They're okay with taking it late. Like, they don't feel any pressure right now, I feel like. Obviously, there's some pressure coming out, but they're comfortable with it. They know how to counter push. They know to apply the things that they know, and that's basically what they're doing. And they know not to let Mag blink skewer someone out. Keep her like perfectly <laughs> positioned with this illuminate, and we see another wave get hit. Luna gets down to half HP. This Aegis mm -hmm. is actually going to be expiring in about a minute's time, so they'll get a tier two here. But I think that's about it, and they're going to have to TP top now. Mm -hmm. Luna's Ooh, probably going to go top. Oh my gosh, Magnus wow. is gone in. Tony Montana actually taking a lot of damage here. This is not good for Oryx. They need a TP now. They actually may be going to lose this tier 3 tower. Oh. Missed, ca missed a hook shot. They wanted to initiate. Oh. They still might. Well, tier 3 down, and it's Shakira who's TPing out. I don't know about this decision. We may just see John actually going for this kill. Oh, There's no. a fight at mid lane. Mag's gone in, but PL's still top. We'll keep an eye on PL a bit later here, but PL is going for the racks, is going for the tier 3. So fight at mid lane. Down. Oh, Nick's assassin. What an engagement. Aegis is gone. He's lost ages. Yeah. 20 HP, is there a mana burn? He hasn't got the mana burn off. Turn around, mana burn, he gets the kill. Oh, <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. Luna goes down, PL gets out at top lane. What a big kill, that is so much golden XP for this Nyx Assassin. Yeah. 
Huge deal. I honestly, I gotta say, I, I praise Seamus play, but I don't get the lack of BKB even at this point. They keep pushing up and trying to get these towers and just illuminate alone, which is an essentially free ability since you can chakra yourself all the mana back, is bringing Luna to like 30% at the start of these fights. And so when they're running away, they can't afford to make any mistakes, and he's yeah. not that quick because he has treads. It's not phase or tranquils or travels or something. They need, I feel like having an urn or something on the Shadow Demon would have helped a lot more than mm -hmm. this medallion just because you can heal up whoever get, whoever's getting hit by the Illuminates a lot more. So Great call. It's actually, uh, it's actually one of those things where I feel like one of your supports should be getting urn almost every game unless you have someone like a Night Stalker who's getting it. But we're mm -hmm. just not seeing it. And Oryx, well, they push back. after have to maybe wait for the next Roshan spawn. I imagine the plan here is like, okay, we actually need a BKB on Luna. Let's farm yeah. that up, and let's get ourselves an Aegis, and then go get some Raxes. But yeah, absolutely, it's going to get a lot harder when you've got Pierre with level two defusal, a lot of gold, a lot of farm, and a lot of split pushing power. Sure, I think Orox had a had a strong timing opportunity there, and uh, just a few decisions like that non BKB on Luna. I just think was really questionable. Like, I thought it would come along sooner or later, and it still hasn't. He only needs up to about 1,200 more for it, and that absolutely has to be his next pickup, because otherwise, it's just going to happen again and again. Now that the Nyx Assassin actually picked up a couple more levels, he'll be much more effective at doing that. I mean, and this PL, of course, the first high ground breach of this game, weird as it might be, was by Dust. I mean, now we have no Tier 3 tower defending this top. And I like what Nyx is doing. I mean, we talked about last game, how Nyx Assassin was doing a weird build, but I feel that at this point when you're looking at... You're, we're essentially in the late game here. When you look at how farmed and high-level Oryx are, we're in late game, and having a four-second cooldown mana, mana burn is more important than having the extra stun on the carapace. Mm. That's what's going to sort of maybe win you a fight or do a lot of damage. Four-second cooldown on the mana burn is a huge source of damage. Definitely. Even on heroes with not that high uh, mana, like if you can land it a few times on Magnus, one of the things people don't think about with Magnus that much is that his magic damage is actually just tremendous. So in addition to the fact that I like the mana burn, I really like that they picked up Pipe on Clock. I don't think there's a better item that he could have built. PL careful, almost gets caught out there. Shadow Demon was looking for him, but it's actually... Where's the gem? Gem is on Jakiro. It's on Jakiro. Yeah, he's he was... the slowest character on their team. I actually don't love gem being on Dubas just because he's going to have so much trouble just catching the... Uh, when... Phantom Lancer gets the Doppel Walk movement bonus, and it's just into Tranquils. Yeah. How the heck is Jakira supposed to catch him? <laughs> it's The problem is, Mag is really the only mobile one with that Blink Skewer. No yeah. one else on the team is very mobile, and that's really the hard thing about... They're, they're fighting... I think, like you mentioned, Dust, they've run this PL so many times, you can see how comfortable they are. They're exploiting the fact that this Oryx team don't have any mobile heroes. They don't really have any right. good way of dealing with a split push. It's funny that we talk about Luna in this game not being mobile, but he has sort of gone the battle tank build. Like, he doesn't have drums, he doesn't have tranquils or phase or travels, and so this is just slowest Luna of your life, and it's still 423 movement speed. But yeah, I mean, they just don't quite have that chase except for the surge. Well, the good news is, well, the bad news is we're not seeing BKB. What does he actually, did he build Satanic. something new? Oh, wow. Huh. I mean, it's That's... HP, it's more life steal, so you're getting Illuminate down, you can life steal your way back up quicker, but... Mm. You still need a BKB. There's an Orchid. Yeah. There's, uh, I mean, just Battery Assault. Every, everyone on this Radiant team has stuff which sort of says you should probably get a BKB, but he's decided, nope, don't need one. He's going to have an he's going to have an Aegis. He's going to have two lives. So I think that's really the redeeming factor here. But it's just have two lives uh. with a BKB. It's... It's like a why not kind of scenario to me. I uh, yeah, I have to be. I, I'm gonna go a little stronger on the same point you're saying and saying that not getting the BKB is a serious error. They can yeah. they can win and they may well win. They're way ahead, but the proximate reason he's dying is not that he's not getting enough life steal. Like let's let's break down the last time that Luna died. They're breaking down the tier two tower. Three illuminates come through from the low ground coddle. Luna ends up at thirty percent. Then they realize, oh crap, we need to run. They sort of walk their slow duck walk back towards here, and Nyx Assassin picks Luna off, again, with spells. Where would Satanic have saved uh, have saved him in that point? Probably nowhere. So how yeah. does adding on a Satanic make you more likely to live in the sort of situations that you're facing troubles in? The, the, the reasoning and theory behind the Satanic just isn't there whatsoever. If you look at the damage right. he's been taking, there's just no but, real justification. It'll give him some more HP. But Refresher on Mag, which is a much bigger deal. Refresher will be a decent item here on Mag. Wouldn't Mag I, even, you could have even gone BKB over this Refresher, but he's got a lot of gold. We may see one soon, and he comes to see. The problem is... Sure, he doesn't have BKB, but he's got two lives. He's going to start sieging. Peel's mm -hmm. got to be here for this defense. And Peel with 4k gold has got to start thinking about throwing away his life to defend this. But Illuminate's bad. They've used on one. They don't have mech for this fight if this is a fight. No if mech. If they get a good hook, they're done. And Luna's already so low. 
If they kill off Luna once, you respawn. You can kill Luna really easily again just with one, if you save one stun or disable. Save an impale. Get hit by a carapace, and then that fight gets turned around. Mm -hmm. They're just getting wrecked by Illuminate gods. I mean, that's the thing. Look at how much damage every yeah. one of these Illuminates do. The problem is they're so afraid to engage because of the mag. Yeah. Blink double RP is just saying, okay, we don't want to engage because if we engage, mag is just going to destroy us with this blink RP. And right. as a result, they're going to lose Raxus, perhaps. Ooh, Luna. Defusal. Hmm. I thought it was actually no, going to No, they just down don't there. feel good enough. Oh just my scared. gosh, the hook shot as the creeps came in. He was trying to hook the Luna, it looked like. Yeah. And he, he was, but he missed it. Finally, they bring down Luna. <laughs> Do we see an engagement always... now with an impale? No. No. They've it's already lost the thing you least expect that gets the Aegis down. The Clockwork Rockets ends up being the one to do it. Uh, they just couldn't find the opening. I honestly think they've missed some really consequential hook shots. These have been serious mistakes. Like, this Clockwork could be doing a lot more. Well, there's your pipe. They want to go high ground now, even without Aegis. And this is it. You've just got to go in here. PL's got 4k gold. Go in, do some yeah. damage, buy back, and then come yeah. at him again. PL basically has to cop an RP himself. RPs are going to go there. It's going to be... Oh, Storm! Does he get out of the first RP? It's actually a silence. Max is actually silenced up. He can't use his RP. And as a result, things are actually going okay for Dust. But PL, he's pushed out of the fight. Luna says, okay, I've got this. Skewer back. PL gets brought back in. Brought down. Immediate buyback. But it's just too big of an item advantage. And this isn't even about the Luna. I mean, we mentioned Luna having a bit, making a bit of a mistake not going for BKB. But this is just Darkseer, Mag, Jakira winning these fights more than the Luna. Definitely. Excellent. Uh, honestly, excellent. Uh, by the other supports and the other core heroes, very patient play. But they might turn a little bit around. Probably not, though. Yeah, it's it's just not really enough here. PL doing some damage here. We'll look to re-engage here on the Luna. Luna actually out of mind. I believe it's... will go down. No. You've got Evasion. You've got Lifesteal. And it looks like he can just out-damage Illusions as well as PL himself. It's a levels thing. Yeah. We're talking about a level 21 Luna against Jeez. a team where the highest person is 18 and the next highest is 13. I mean, the Storm Spirit, I gotta say, Ush, I mean, you really can't say too much about 070 on Storm Spirit. It's not the record you want. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that. I did not it's, realize. It's a little bleak. Oh, uh, he just, he lost mid. I mean, straight yeah. up. Magnus is famous for being a hero that doesn't really win mid, but just never loses mid. But in this case, Tony Montana won mid and he won it in a big way. The Luna was more strategically viable than tactically viable. Like, I think they went the right approach right up to that BKB. But it's not that Sima just had such an amazing execution game. But it is that Tony Montana played an absolutely excellent Magnus. And CA also, very fine Darkseer. Not even coming close to dying. Always being there for the right team fight. And, and uh, Luna, yeah. despite us not being happy without the BKB, has just farmed extraordinarily yes. well. We're looking at 900 GPM almost. And this is on a Luna. This isn't something like an Alchemist or an Anti-Mage. Anti-Mage, yeah. you can blink around, be super mobile. Alchemist, got Grievel's Greed, boost up your GPM. This is 900 GPM on a Luna of all heroes. This is Absolutely. amazing. He just, <laughs> he just bought Travels and Daedalus straight up. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, absolutely. The GPM, the three and a half minute Midas and just managing to use that farm. It's not just that. I mean, even his farm density, he's always been in the right place to actually get that farm. Almost 11 last hits per minute. That's pretty incredible farm. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, stacking Ancients, going at the right times, being just wherever he needs to be. His his farming efficiency has just been perfect. And it's hey, it's, he had the one death, which was a bit of a misplay, thinking he maybe sold the Aegis. And we can criticize him for not getting a BKB, but he's only died once the entire game, which was just a bit of a mistake. He could have actually lived there if he just ran away, but he, just, he wanted to go back in for some weird reason. So desp I agree. despite not having a BKB, it's... It really hasn't mattered, and he's played a, a perfect game. So, you can only you can only hate on a team that's winning by a dramatic margin so much. Yeah. You have to do you do have to also acknowledge that they played an excellent game that I just think just so strategically well thought out at the at the macro level. Blinding light is going to cause them some issues here because that will give them that strong strong mischance here. But the bouncing glaive, Nick says takes a lot of damage. We'll see a dust come out here. Clockwork actually will hit a decent hook <laughs> hit, followed by a cock. But there's just this. Eh. This is too much damage and mag with double ulti. Like, what do you do to that? You Not can have, much. It doesn't really matter at this point what how how well Dust engage, how well they defend. Mm -hmm. It's a Luna with this much farm. It's a mag with 
just two RPs. You've got a Dax. Yeah. I don't even think Daxi uses. Oh, he did use his ultimate some way. He did. Uh, he actually that. had an amazing vacuum. He yeah. vacuumed people into the second RP. It was not that they would have lost if that hadn't happened, but you know you got to give props for the little things. I I'm just seeing an engagement from Dust. And I'm just thinking in my head like, this item advantage is just a joke. There's no way they're gonna win this fight. They put up a great. They did put up a good fight. They just they got someone outclassed by Oryx here. I think Dust honestly just got a little bit. There were two two problems from my perspective, gods. One is that got they got a little outthought in the pregame phase. Like uh, Orox just came in with a very clear strategy, and at no point did Dust counter that strategy. They sort of just advanced their own while not really materially impacting Orox's. So as long as Orox's idea of how to play the game was solid, they would most likely win. And then the other thing is, of course, mid. Mid was a. Uh, a calamity, basically. Honestly, they they didn't get Ush to his levels. They didn't get a timely Orchid, and they essentially allowed the Magnus to to run free on them. Not that Dust played bad. I think there's a lot of upside potential on this team. Chim on the Keeper of the Light, uh, he had a great bait on Magnus once, and in fact, all of his blinding lights were really on point. An ability of Coddle's that isn't highlighted that often, but I think should be because Coddle just has so many amazing abilities. Yeah. And a great play from uh, John on the Phantom Lancer too. Honestly, so I don't think they. I think they availed themselves well, but we sort of see what they need to work on to become a, a tier one team. Yeah, I think John and Jim did definitely play well. Definitely. Well, actually, I, I'm not sure if we'll catch their next match against Arctic. They're going to be going up against Arctic, but I think either at the same time or maybe, I'm not sure if they're actually going to be overlapping. We're going to have EG up against Aurochs, and then we have Arctic up against Dust in the lower bracket. If they're at different times, we'll be streaming them both. If not, we'll be streaming, of course, the winner bracket match between EG and Aurochs. That action's coming up soon, guys. This is your We Play Dota 2 League. This is your sort of Phase 1. This is the last weekend with Phase 1. Then we get into Phase 2 where you've got, well, all the teams who won through Phase 1. You, you can guess most of their names. Dignitas, Liquid, uh, well, EG looking to do so. You've got teams like No Tidehunter, Na'Vi, Empire. It's really the, the top teams in the European and American scene at the moment. So be sure to follow the event. Uh, we Play tv is the website and of course it's sponsored by logitech g-series western digital and inno 3d so big thanks to all our sponsors i'm gods vikramon was the guy joining me i see some people asking uh do you have a twitter or something people can follow you on i do yeah basically anywhere you type in my name you will probably find me V Y K R O M O N D. cool well we'll be back soon with our next match which i believe is going to be it might be the lower bracket match and then we'll come back for the upper bracket match after i'll just, just check with the admins make sure we don't miss the eg versus oryx match uh mm -hmm. but guys thanks everyone for tuning in this has been a beyond the summit cast of the we play dota 2 league we'll be back soon with more live action